Hello students, this is Mr. Martyrone, and we are beginning our unit on the Industrial Revolution. I'm going to be joined uh, in the next couple of videos with a couple of your classmates. They're going to uh, kind of jump in and change things up a bit. So today in our flip classroom, you guys want to have at your Cornell notes that deal with the Industrial Revolution. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the Industrial Revolution begins, and we're going to look at the causes of industrialization. All right, so we'll do those two uh, segments before moving on to uh, the commercial revolution, uh, the biggest inventions, and then England leading the way. So, industrial revolution. What happens? This is known as the period where it's the rise of machines, where output increases tremendously, people move into the cities, er rapid urbanization, and the way of life for not just Europe, but also the United States and Asia change quite dramatically. So how does this all fit into what we've studied? So in December, we spent a substantial amount of time studying and talking about the causes and effects of the age of exploration. And as European explorers bring back vast quantities of goods from from Europe, or excuse me, from the Americas to Europe, Europeans need a way to provide uh, a mechanism in which they can turn those raw materials into finished products. And that yields this age of industrialization, the Industrial Revolution, beginning in the 1700s and taking us all the way up to the 1920s. And then our next unit, our next area of study is going to be the age of imperialism, which is also going to be European expansion for these goods so that they can industrialize. So these two units, the Industrial Revolution and imperialism, really carry us forward into the 20th century and into World War I and later World War II. The Industrial Revolution begins. In the eight, into the late 18th century, many European farmers were farmers and used simple tools to produce only what they needed. This was a traditional comedy and people basically lived as the same way as their ancestors. They relied on farming and basic tools. Thank you, Allison. So like Allison said, uh, the early traditional economies uh, transpired. And we know that they uh, also, those people lived on manors and that was the age of feudalism. But beginning in the early 1700s, machines, early machines, such as the flying shuttle and the spinning jenny, slowly begin to do the work of individuals. The first change to occur was in what's known as the textile industry. And the textile industry is, or textiles are pieces of fabric that are raw in nature before they become closed. So it's kind of like the middle piece of raw cotton and then the final piece of clothing that you'd wear. So that textile industry it remark begins the great remarkable change. I would make sure you start underlining that key point because that's a key element to understanding the Industrial Revolution, that the first change was in England and it happened to the textile industry. This turning point is known as the Industrial Revolution. It began in the 1700s and was a result of exploration. Thanks, Allison. Great job. Now we're going to move on to the causes of industrialization. There's three main causes of industrialization. One is the agriculture revolution. One is the growing labor force. And then the third is going to be the development of new technologies. So because of the agriculture revolution, new farming methods improve. And what this means are, we said, one of the most important invention of industrialization was the, was the fence. And because of small stone fences uh, piled high, maybe two to three feet, cows and cattle and other farming animals couldn't jump over those fences. That kept livestock in. It also meant that farmers didn't have to travel the countryside to find their animals. So with that free time, they could also work and develop crops on their farms. This new technology and this increased farming output. So the more produce and the more uh, vegetation that was produced uh, led to uh, a greater food supply, which in turn led to a rise in European population. So I want you guys to understand that it is a, a bubble up effect. 
when you see improvements in one area of the world, society is going to expand and get bigger, like we've seen here, beginning with the agricultural revolution. Over a period of 8,000 years, farming methods will improve, lands will be enclosed, and the, we're going to see a dramatic rise in the population. So the next question is, well, what happens to that population? Do there remain farmers? And here to talk more about that is Paul. Thanks, Mr. Mardone. And with a surplus of food comes with the growth of a labor force. Women were living long and healthy lives and gave birth to children who lived longer and better lives. Jobless farmers migrated to where? Cities. Um, cities will be at the epicenter of will, will, will be at the epicenter of the industrial revolution, and they play a vital role in the revolution itself. With the strong concentration of people, ideas slowly became real. New technologies such as coal and steam came into reality. Thanks, Paul. So additionally, not only were there new technologies and new sources such as coal and steam, there was also something called the smelting process. And the smelting process is not something you do with your dirty clothes, the smelting process is the process of improving and developing better, stronger iron. And what this is, is it's simply the idea of heating up the iron very hot and then putting it, putting it in cold water, heating it up again, putting it in cold water, heating it up again and putting it in cold water. What this does is it creates a very strong steel. Why do we need strong steel, you ask? Well, remember, like Paul said a minute ago, People are, because of the increase in population, they can't live on the farm. So where are they moving? They're moving into the cities. Well, cities only have so much space. So eventually people are going to say, well, if we can't expand outward, we need to expand upward. And, and um, the smelting process and strong steel is going to be the backbone of the European and American cities. If you feel that we went a little bit too fast, you can watch this video again. You can also download the notes. They are on Edmodo, uh, but make sure you have the first two uh, places in your graphic organizer, your Cornell notes, complete.